Hey guys, Brian Salter here. And you know, I've had a lot of questions about why would someone use titanium valves as opposed to stainless. The main answer is weight. A titanium valve doesn't inherently flow any better than a stainless valve. The big difference is right here. This stainless valve weighs 115 grams. It requires a spring like this to keep the valve controlled at 8,000 RPMs. This titanium valve weighs 65 grams. And it requires a spring like this. And it'll turn 9,000 RPMs. Quite a bit of difference in spring pressure between the two. That spring pressure coincides with pressure you're putting on the camshaft. For example, this cam came in yesterday and it started wiping out the load. Less spring pressure while maintaining valve control means way longer engine life, less metal in the oil, and more horsepower because you're gonna have better valve train stability. If you guys know anything about me with my background it's all about stability equals power equals winds the other thing and I'm gonna hold this up but it's it's a boat anchor let me tell you is running a heavy spring cracks cam towers they break But on a typical V8 or V6, that heavy spring, because it could be a big, tall PSI or whatever, that spring puts pressure on the rocker arm, which they also can break, pushes down the push rod, which pushes down the lifter, which pushes against the camshaft. That's why I have preached, the bigger the lifter, the better. I have experience with this. I have dyno tests with this. When you smooth out the valve train harmonics with a bigger roller wheel, when you're taking that spring pressure and spreading it out over more of a surface, which basically equals to a larger bearing is really what it comes out to. When you polish the camshaft with Comp's new MSE treatment, it looks like polished glass. That surface area is much slicker, therefore the ride is smoother with a bigger roller wheel or a bigger flat tappet, you're transferring the weight better. You can run a different cam load with a bigger lifter, lighter valves, lighter springs, less stress on the engine, better valve train stability, more horsepower, finishing the race, and then winning. That's why. And there are do's and don'ts. You never run titanium with anything but beryllium copper seats. And when we do unleaded fuel, like in NASCAR, I run coated valve faces and stems. DLC or some Molly. And some guys are doing some titanium stuff. Some titanium coatings, I mean. So, the other thing is bronze guides. Titanium galls so bad. When you rub a piece of titanium up against any other, any other type of material, like any type of metal, it gets hot. Very hot. Very fast. Titanium does not have the metal fatigue wear like stainless does, so it will break. Yes, it's super strong. It's super light but it will break. 
Now, I'm telling you, one of the reasons I love the Teflon seals is because they don't heat up titanium valves. And when you learn how to install them, you don't have any problems. I've been using them for 30 years, and I was taught how to install that seal. You have to understand how to install that seal. And that seal works wonderful for titanium. I don't have any problems with them. So if you want to know how to use them, give me a buzz. I'll teach you. Or you can watch my video. And then sometimes there are valve springs that rule classes require you run a certain size spring that you can't get any other seal on the cylinder head except for that type. Which was the case in the video I made. However, that's the reason. The weight, the lighter spring, the better stability. They are expensive. And not just the valve. As you saw me do in the last three cylinder head episodes, you saw what all I had to do just to run a lightweight titanium valve. So, yeah, they're a lot more work. So it's not for the faint of heart. It's for people who are serious. Because you're going to spend a minimum of 200 bucks per valve. Plus all the machine work. If your head does not have beryllium copper. In my case, I use Moldstar. Uh, which is one of the best. And, you know, bronze guides, all that. It was a lot of work, as you, as you can see. So the expense... You know, it's not just the valve, it's everything that goes with it. The titanium retainers, I mean, look, is that not super cool? <laughs> super cool, right? So much better. All right, I hope that answered your question about why titanium. Um, it has its reasons. And then, consequently, there are reasons you may not want to use it which would be pretty much the opposite of the reasons I gave. Now, the question was, well, can't you turn stainless 8,000 RPMs? Well, sure you can. What you're doing is, you're having to run a little more spring, and the spring's, the spring's life will not last as long. Because of the inertia of this weight, you're going to wear out the valve spring much faster. Now, I have a tendency to, because of my... Uh, because of my background, I have a tendency to oil everything. Uh, we, I put spring rollers on stuff when I'm running heavy spring, solid rollers. I like to put spring rollers on everything, even street cars. And that does add a lot to their life. But if you run a, a heavy stainless valve, especially in a solid roller application where there's high RPM, you have to be careful about your spring life as how many times you can turn it 8,000 RPMs because the one time it doesn't go, it will kiss a piston. And that could be catastrophic. Anyways, even with titanium valves, we changed our valve springs. I'm going to say in, in 20 races, I probably change springs every four to five races. And I'm talking like uh, 200 laps would be a race. And use that out of practice to qualify them. So you might be looking at 230 laps. By the time you got done with, I'm going to say four, probably, probably 800 laps you'd need to put springs on. Yeah. And as soon as you did, the driver would immediately be like, wow, this thing is RPM and so much better again. And It's just the nature of the beast, guys, when you're lifting the valve almost 800 thousandths. Uh... Anyways, I hope that answers your question. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and y'all have a great weekend. Thank you.